Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part in my Creating a Great Tone series for our Line 6 Helix and HX Stomp and Pod Go. Last week I did another part in this series, which was the first time I had done an episode in this series in quite some time. And I did a revised edition of my original first video in this series that so many folks have told me they enjoyed. But I, I did a real different twist on it for anybody who hasn't watched that video. Uh, the link will be below if you wanna check that out first. And what I actually did without kind of telling everybody right away is I played you a little performance that I recorded with a rhythm section and some layered guitars, but didn't tell everybody right off the bat that it was of my real rev generator guitar amp recorded through a fairly expensive recording chain uh, using warm audio microphones and warm audio mic preamps and compressors through all real analog equipment just to kind of make the point that listen to this really nice recording chain through this really nice guitar amp multiple thousands of dollars worth of equipment and this is how it sounds when recorded properly to compare it to how I would use the helix versus a real life situation of how we always used to record guitars before modeling was actually a thing. Now the reason I did this is because a lot of folks had said in the past that you know oh you have to tweak the amps in the Helix, you have to add tons of EQ, you have to do this, you have to do that, otherwise it wouldn't sound good. So I compared my template that I came up with in that first Create a Great Tone series video just without an amp model, you know, through a, a high and low shelf EQ, through a little bit of compression, although in the real version I used real analog compression, uh, through some reverb and all the different things that I would have added in that template to compare it to how I would work even if I was working in the real world and that I would still use those tools and maybe add some high and low shelf, maybe add some more compression, et cetera, et cetera. So I came up with a really nice result and a lot of folks told me they loved the sound of the mix and the guitars, it was all real guitars in that video, but I thought wouldn't it be interesting now to take those real guitars and really quick and instinctively try and find an amp model in the Helix that I thought could come fairly close or somewhere in the ballpark of what I recorded through this really expensive recording chain and this really expensive amplifier. So first, let's just look at the actual recording chain that I used and take a look at what the street price cost of all this equipment would actually be. So going over to the Sweetwater website, what we find is that a Rev Generator 100R Mark III 120 watt tube head runs for $26.99 US. A Rev 212 extension cabinet runs for $899. A single channel of warm audio WA-73 EQ, it's mic preamp and EQ, runs you $799. A warm audio WA-76 discrete FET compressor runs you $599. And a warm audio WA-251 large diaphragm tube condenser microphone, which is one of the mics I used on some of these tracks, is $799 which gives us a grand total of $5,795 street price. When looking at this guitar chain from guitar amp to cabinet to microphone to microphone preamp and compressor. Compare that to the price of a Line 6 Helix, which would be $1,499. Now you might say, why am I comparing the prices? Well, to show back in the day when we didn't have modelers and we wanted to get a really high quality tube guitar amp into some very high quality recording equipment, it was not an inexpensive undertaking. And I'll tell you something, the folks at Warm Audio have brought this equipment to us at a much lower price point than it used to be. If you were to buy a real 1176 or a real Neve uh, 1076, mic pre and EQ or a real Telefunken 251 microphone, those prices would be substantially higher. So I guess the point is, can we replace this by just going in the Helix and with very little effort, come up with a tone from our $1,500 Helix that's going to be I don't know if I can say just as good because I don't know what as good means. Everybody's personal preference is going to be different. But could we get something in the ballpark or even close enough to the point that we would really be splitting hairs to say that one is better or worse? Because again, that's going to come down to a very subjective personal preference. So let's do this. Let's go over to Cubase and take a look and see how I went about doing this. All right, so here we are over in Cubase. And for anybody who watched the last video, what I have up here is my little project where I had this piece of music, my rhythm section. With the various guitars and the, the whole mix sounded something like this. Mm -hmm. 
and later on with some lead guitar coming in. Okay, so anybody who watched the first video is familiar with that little piece of music. I was really happy with the way it turned out. Now, what I did is, if you'll notice here's a quick uh, refresher, is you'll have guitar one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Those are the real guitar tracks. Now, what I always do is I do a DI'd guitar track because I reamp those guitar tracks. So these are the identical performances, whether run through the real guitar amp or whether run through the Helix. So on this track here, which is just labeled guitar stereo one, guitar stereo two, I could have labeled them differently, but these are the DI tracks. So if we take this, go down to the DI track and I'm going to bypass Helix native. This is what the original performance sounded like. Okay, just a very quiet DI'd guitar. I added Helix Native to it, and I added the signal chain that I processed it with, which was a guitar amp, and I'll go into why I chose this guitar amp in a minute, through a few EQs that would be similar to my template. So that's fine, we'll listen to the results of that in a moment. The original guitar here, which is the real rev. Now, what you'll notice, I also processed that through Helix Native, but without any guitar amp. So if I just bypass this, you will hear the guitar amp as recorded through that very expensive signal chain I was just telling you about, and it sounds like this. So that's the real rev generator through all the warm audio microphone and preamp and compressor. Now, it's a very nice sound, but what I was trying to make the point of is if I bring Helix Native in, even on a real guitar track, I would likely process it in very much the same way as my template processes it. So this idea that if we're using real guitar amps, they just sound perfect uh, and perfect mix ready sounds right when we record them out of the guitar is not necessarily the case. I mean, we could get lucky and maybe they work perfectly. But in this case, I added a little bit of low and high cut as many engineers would do. I added a little bit of low and high shelf, very subtle though, uh, low frequency, all the frequencies below 650 Hertz down by two dB, all the frequencies above plus one dB. Real personal preference though, if I want to add those in, I added a little bit of plate reverb just because I wanted a little more ambience to it. And I actually kept the compressor off, as I mentioned in the first video, simply because I compressed it on the way in with the 1176 style compressor. So what it sounded like when I play those tracks with this bypassed, which is just the real guitar being recorded. Now I'll unbypass native and you can hear what it sounds like and I'll let it play and go back and forth. There you have it. Just huge difference? No, not really. But I still process it in a very similar way as I would the Helix. But then, like I said, that got me thinking. What if I took that same DI track, solo that out here, and take the exact same chain. If you notice, I have the same EQ, high and low cuts, the same high and low shelf I used, the same reverb. I added the compression in here simply because this isn't going to be compressed, whereas the real guitar I compressed on the way in with the WA-76 or the 1176 style compressor. So all I did is I added an amp model. Now, you might say, why the placator clean? I did this all extremely instinctive. I said, I'm going to try and kind of come as close as I can to the tone I got from the real rev amp through the real analog recording chain but with no finagling so that people can see that you don't have to do all this processing through the Helix to somehow have it sound all right. You can actually just pull up an amp model and it's going to sound pretty good. So let's do this first of all. I'm going to turn all the extra stuff off. I'm going to keep the compressor on simply because in comparison to the real guitar track, the real guitar track has a bit of compression on it. Mind you, this is an LA 2A style compressor. I used an 1176. But again, we'll see that we we'll really start to split hairs in a lot of ways. I chose the Placator Clean just instinctively, and I thought, I think I can get the sounds I need out of it. I also chose a 212 Interstate Cab, which is a 212 cab by the folks at Dr. Z, a wonderful guitar amp company that I used to be affiliated with. I love those guys, wonderful people and wonderful products. And I mic'd it with a 47 condenser mic, because on the real track, I used a warm audio WA-47 Junior, which is a mic that's very similar to the Neumann U47. The 212 Interstate as well, as far as I understand, it contains two vintage 30 speakers, much like my Rev cabinet. So I pulled this up and within about, I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds, I just moved the bass treble presence drive around to get a tone that was going to be somewhat in the ballpark 
of the original real track I recorded with the Rev. So if I bypass Helix Native here so that we don't get all these extra little sweeteners, the, the high and low shelf and the high cuts and the reverb and whatnot, and we come over to Helix Native over here where we've bypassed all that as well. And all we're hearing right now is the amp model into a very tiny bit of uh, compression through the LA Studio comp. Here is the sound of the real guitar track that I recorded through the Rev and the analog recording chain. And when I unsolo that, what you will hear is the Helix version I dialed up in about 15 or 20 seconds to get in the ballpark just by making the selections I did with the speaker cab and the microphone. So here we go and we'll compare that. So again, when this is soloed, it's the real guitar. When it's unsoloed, it's going to be the Helix only. What do you guys think? I was actually quite impressed with how close that got. I mean, it, it. listen, there's no way, and there's a big disclaimer here, I was not trying to duplicate the sound or recreate it exactly. I don't think that's possible. There's way too many variables involved. I'm using this room with a mic positioned in a very specific place uh, with a very specific microphone, which is a different microphone, a different guitar cabinet, a different guitar amp, different recording chain. So can, taking all those things into consideration, I was blown away by how eerily close these came considering all of those things. Now, what happens if we process it like I did in the mix where we add in the low and high cut, the low and high shelf, the reverb, and in this case, I didn't have the compression, but on the other, I did. And I bring Helix Native in here for the Helix amp track and I re-engage all of that. Here's how those two things sound going back to back. Same thing when I'm soloing things out. So here is the real guitar and when I unsolo that, you'll hear the Helix version. Maybe a little more brightness to the Helix version, but again, is that the Helix fault? It's probably my fault. It's probably in my really quick instinctive uh, twiddling with the knobs on there. I just dialed that in to my ear at that moment, and I could probably change that by going to the tone stack on the amp and just dialing out some treble or presence or whatnot. So I, I won't get into that now, but I, I literally spent almost no time trying to do this just to show that what if I just grab an amp model, put it up on the path, can I get it sounding like a really expensive real amp recorded through a very high-end recording chain? And I, I would say that this kind of answers the question. Yes, so we say, fine, that's great on the single guitar track. What I did though is I recreated the entire mix in the same fashion and I pulled up just the placator clean. Uh, I think you're gonna notice that because I went to channel two on the rev, which is a little, and I didn't go heavy gain, but just a little more broken up, I cranked up the placator clean. I don't think it has quite as much grit or edge to it, but again, taking all that in consideration, um, it was kind of amazing how close I was able to get all this. If you notice on the lead track here, I used the same 212 interstate, but I went to a 67 condenser mic, pulled it a couple and a half inches back. I added a little bit of delay, but this is the same processing I did on the real tracks. Again, adding just a little bit more compression in because like I said, the real tracks were compressed on the way in. So if we take a listen and compare the lead tracks now, again, when I have it unsoloed, this would be the Helix version. When I have it soloed, this would be the real rev. <laughs>
again, I would say eerily close considering all the different variables that I really can't control since I don't have all of this exact signal chain and same speaker cabinet and amp modeled in the Helix. So to just go grab kind of an instinctive, I don't, I don't want to say random amp, but you know, picking an amp just instinctively that I thought would get us sort of in the ballpark with a speaker cab in the Helix that I thought would get us in the ballpark and a microphone and then just using the tone stack and really processing it no different other than adding the same little sweetener effects I had in on the original real guitar. I think it was amazing how close it got. Now, what I also did is over here, I exported a mix of both of these where I have the real rev here on this track and the Helix version of the entire mix. So if you notice, I duplicated all of the pan settings. I, uh, matched the uh, recording levels as well as I could. Again, we're dealing with different tones, so it's a little tough to get it perfect. But here's how the two mixes sound, and nothing else is playing at this point on the timeline. So when I'm playing it and you see this version, nothing soloed, it's going to be the Helix version. And then when I solo, this will be the real rev version through the analog chain. So here's how those mixes sound. Here's the Helix version to start. What do you guys think? I, like I said, for the amount of work I put into this, I think the whole time to paste all the settings into Helix Native for all the tracks and balance the volumes, I think I spent maybe 20, 25 minutes on this. Really not even trying to recreate the exact sounds just because I knew that would be next to impossible. So again, you know, yes, there are differences. The lead, I think, on the real rev amp had a little bit more overdrive. It's all I could coax out of the placator clean. I guess if I had thrown a little clean boost or overdrive pedal in front of it, I probably could have got closer, but I really didn't want to spend that much time on it because the whole point was to see how quickly I could get something that I would, in the end, feel as comfortable using. Um, and quite honestly, I can say in my opinion and others might disagree with me and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I would use either one of these. Um, the Helix version was far easier to accomplish. I didn't have to get microphones out and place them and dial in the sound on the amp, place the microphone where it had to go perfect, do some test runs, listen to it on tape, dial in the compressor and the mic preamp to where I wanted them. It was a lot less work to just pull up the Helix, grab a placator clean, put it in and have something usable in literally seconds rather than going through the whole recording chain. Now, does that mean you should never have a high-end recording chain like this? Absolutely not. I mean, I use this while you're hearing me talk through the same warm audio mic preamp and compressor through the Shure SM7B, and I think it sounds really great. Uh, if I'm recording acoustic guitars, drums, any instrument which requires real life acoustic recording, right? Uh, this is a great studio chain to have and you can get some beautiful guitar tones out of it. Maybe I have a session where a client really wants a real guitar amp for whatever reason, they don't want a modeler. Well, guess what? I'm gonna be able to give them that. So there are still purposes for these high-end recording chains and nice microphones and whatnot. But for myself, if I'm just working, writing music or doing sessions, 
or recording albums, I'm going to grab the Helix and I'll be perfectly happy with it. And I think this shows we really don't need to spend an exorbitant amount of time to get a very usable tone. Now, if I take these tones and plug them into my power cab on FRFR mode, guess what? They sound fine and I could play these live as well. In fact, I do use these types of things all the time. My Line 6 Marketplace presets, you know, I don't only put those up and say, oh, those are, you know, those are great presets, but I, I use something else. Anytime I play live, I just grab one of my Marketplace presets. It's going to be most appropriate for whatever style I'm playing and I, I use those. So again, if we come in and really dive in here and listen to the difference with these tones. My impression is that I probably dialed a little more brightness into the Helix version for whatever reason, which is fine, but I mean, I could dial that out really easy too. And if I had spent maybe, you know, double the time on this that I did, I probably could have come in and tweaked this even closer. But again, I'm kind of happy. With pretty much either of these mixes. Like I said, with the lead tone. Might be a little more compression and a little more overdrive on the rev version. The Helix version might be a hair louder too, which is something I, I would want to balance off to get a really great comparison. I think my final opinion on this would actually be, I love both of them. They're both extremely usable. I think if I was to do a blind test with these two, like most blind tests, you'd end up with somewhere in the vicinity of half the people saying they like tone A and half the people saying they like tone B. And that just points to the fact that we all have very different personal preferences. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of maybe more brightness to how I dialed in the Helix version, slightly maybe more uh, darkness to the way I dialed in the Rev version. Could have been the day I did it, could have been just my ears at that moment in time. Uh, but some people are going to like one, some people aren't going to like it. Others will like the other one better, and that's all fine. It really comes down to the point of showing that we all have personal preference. We can't make everybody happy with the exact same thing. But if we listen to either one of these, I think... Uh, without comparing it to the other, I think what we would quickly do is just focus on the piece of music and go, I either like the piece of music or I don't. Uh, I either like the playing or I don't. And I think we would listen to it without really giving any second thought to the equipment that was used. So I thought that was a really fun comparison to kind of further show the point that the, the folks out there who are saying that somehow the Helix needs so much work, uh, so much dialing in and so much tweaking and so much EQing and so much this, that, and the other to have it sound acceptable or usable, I don't think it's really accurate. In the same amount of time it would take us to dial in a real guitar amp by saying, oh, that's a little too bright. I think I'll turn the treble down. Or I want a little more fullness. I think I'll, I'll turn the bass up. Or I want a, you know, a little bit more in the mid-range, we can do the same thing on the Helix by either just using the tone stack in the amp model or going to a microphone, moving it back a couple inches, moving it closer, choosing a different microphone, much like we would in the real world. So I think that really goes to show that the Helix, man, like I've said before, really easy to dial in tones. Using the template that I always use, uh, whether it's applied to a real guitar amp or just a Helix amp model, it's not that it's needed for the Helix to sound good, but I use it to maybe make things a little bit more, shall we say, mix ready. A little bit of compression, a little bit of high and low shelf, maybe a little high and low cut, just like we would in the real world. So this is not something we need to do in the Helix. It's something that we can do if that's our preference, much like we would do to a real guitar amp in with a real analog recording chain. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that look at kind of this comparison from the real world to the Helix, and I hope that's helpful to some, and I hope it maybe clears up some misconceptions as to what we're actually hearing when we are playing the Helix, and uh, I hope it helps you just go and create some great tones right away. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would find it interesting. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys so much again for sharing your time with me, and ciao for now.